Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Thank you again for joining us. And we just want to welcome you to this last, let's say, Torah portion for this cycle. Uh, today is the 7th of October, 2023, or the year of uh, 5784. And it is called the Simchat Torah, or which means joy of the Torah, and also Bidzot Habracha, which this is the blessing. So we are going to be kind of doing a double <clears throat> uh, reading. However, the sermon will not be that long, so don't worry. <laughs> I'm just joking. But today we're reading from Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 1, through chapter 34, verse 12. We're finishing the book of Deuteronomy. And then the Haftarah, the prophetic portion, is Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 through 18. And the Brit Chadasha is Matthew chapter 5, verses 17 through 48. And Romans chapter 7, verses 21 through 25. <clears throat> My name is Rabbi Clint Harel Pry. Before we start, again, I want to open this time in prayer. So, Abba Father, thank you again for the opportunity and privilege we have that we can be with you in your presence because of what Yeshua did on the cross for us and the fact that he resurrected and is getting ready to come back soon. So I ask that uh, that which comes out of my mouth will be for your glory and will be according to your Ruach HaKodesh, your Holy Spirit, in the name of Yeshua. Amen. So in the Torah, the eighth day symbolizes basically a new beginning. The seventh day brings a Sabbath and the conclusion of the preceding week. Eighth day is the first day of the new week, which is Sunday. So after seven years, a new sabbatical cycle begins. This year, we're not only in uh, beginning a new sabbatical cycle, uh, we just finished not just a seven-year period. We, we, we actually finished the 50th year of a, a <clears throat> seven times seven-year cycle. So we just finished the year of Jubilee. Now we're going to start a new set of seven years. And a whole lot of exciting things are starting to happen and are going to continue to get worse and happen more as time goes by. Uh, so today being Shabbat, I'm hearing uh, many things happening in Israel. Uh, the attack is happening now. And uh, it's not easy to sit here and just do this, but I will continue to do so until uh, Adonai calls me to do something else. So after the seven days of Sukkot, the festival, the festival ends with a day to mark the beginning of the new cycle and the mysterious eighth, eighth day or the Shemini Atzeret. This day marks the new beginning of the agricultural cycle and the annual Torah reading cycle. Now remember what I've said before, there also is the, the actual biblical new year, which happens in the springtime. But if you think about it, you have two kind of uh, planting and uh, <clears throat> reaping seasons, right? We have the, the time when we plant in the springtime and reap in the fall. And then there's a the time we, we, we actually plant in the fall and reap in the spring, depending on what you are planting and reaping. So we could say that either way could work out. This day marks the new beginning of the agricultural cycle, like I said, in the annual Torah reading cycle. Considering the eighth day, also offers a unique insight into uh, the priesthoods of Aaron and Yeshua. So in Jewish beliefs, the number eight stands outside the cycle of time. <clears throat> the eighth day kind of alludes to the world to come and the resurrection of Yeshua. So the seven days of the week symbolize seven ages of history, which culminate with the millennium, millennial messianic era, which is about to start soon. In a few years, the eighth day symbolizes eternity that follows the seven ages of history. The early believers also applied the term eighth day to the day of Yeshua's resurrection because he rose on the day following the Sabbath. The use of that terminology connected his resurrection with the eternal glory of the world to come, Olam Abba, in Hebrew. So Aaron and his sons began their priestly ministry on the eighth day after seven days of Ordination, where they couldn't move from where they were, and they had to be there and be consecrated. And this is found in Leviticus 9.1. So in the same way, the masters 
Yeshua's priesthood began on the day after the Sabbath, the day of his resurrection. <clears throat> so when we speak of, the, of Yeshua's priesthood, we're speaking metaphorically and symbolically. As a writer of the book of Hebrews points out, Yeshua is not truly a priest in the earthly sense of the term. It says, if he were on earth, he would not be a priest at all, since there are those who offer the gifts according to the Torah, Hebrews 8.4. Neither does he serve in an earthly temple, at least not yet, not until he comes back and he will serve for a thousand years and then destroy everything. And we know what happens then with the new Jerusalem, new earth. So <clears throat> even though we speak of him as performing the functions of a priest uh, on our behalf, the images we have in our minds of him applying blood to an altar in heaven are simply crude imagings and primitive symbols of the greater spiritual uh, transactions that occurred with his death, resurrection, and his ascension to heaven. Now, nonetheless, the sanctuary and the Aaronic priesthood do reflect these heavenly realities. When we study the priesthood's first day of ministry in Parashat Shemini, we find hints about the inauguration of Yeshua, the Messiah, into his priestly office. On the same day that we finished reading the Torah, we begin it again. So, <clears throat> on Friday evening, we end with the, the book of Deuteronomy. On Shabbat morning, the day this morning, we actually read also the first uh, chapter of, of Genesis and the first 12 verses of the second chapter. So we conclude with the book of Deuteronomy. Then the scroll is totally rewound. We began reading the book of Genesis. The celebration that accomplish, the accompanies the ending and the beginning of the Torah reading is called Simchat Torah, or Rejoicing of the Torah. And it is traditionally done on the eighth day, or Shemini Atzeret, after the festival Sukkot. However, in the diaspora, where festival Sabbaths are doubled, it can be on the ninth day. I don't know where this came from. I prefer to stick with the <clears throat> regular Jewish calendar of seven and the eighth day. Why is it called the Rejoicing of the Torah? as if the Torah itself is doing the rejoicing. In some sense, it seems as if the Torah does rejoice on this day. Think about it, in the synagogue, it's traditional to take the Torah scroll in one's arms, and some of those big ones are really heavy, <laughs> and dance through the aisles with it. And I'm in a long <clears throat> chain of procession of people. Congregants become the legs and feet of the scroll as they dance throughout the assembly. So if you think about it, you're dancing with the Torah scroll around the sanctuary. At the end of the book of Deuteronomy, we read the story of how Moses, the first redeemer and foreshadowing type of the Messiah to come, he dies, right? He comes to death after 120 years. He sees the promised land from the heights of Mount Nebo. And then he dies and he gets buried in the valley below somewhere. Nobody knows where because Adonai buried him. Regarding his death, the Torah tells us that Adonai himself buried the body of Moses. And the Midrash Shabbat Im imagines Adonai kind of coaxing Moses' soul from his body. <laughs> Who knows? <clears throat> Must have been very interesting. I'm sure it was very gentle. And, um, and, uh, and we will see Moses again soon, actually. Uh, when the two witnesses come, it says the two witnesses, they will be uh, filled with the spirits of Elijah and Moses. So... Thereupon, Adonai kissed Moses and took away his soul with the kiss of the mouth. This is written in Deuteronomy Rabbah 11, verse 10. Yet before we even have the proper time to grieve the death of Moses, who was a pattern, like I said, of the Messiah to come, and we rewind the scroll of Torah, we read the narrative of a new beginning, a new creation, a new heaven, a new earth, and a new man, Adam, into whom Adonai breathes the soul of life. So the kiss of death and the kiss of life are delivered from the same mouth. A pattern is established. The ending, which is Tav, gives way to the beginning, Aleph. Death gives way to life. The Adonai, the end, is a new beginning. Think about it. When we die or we leave this earth, we get to have a whole new beginning in the kingdom of heaven. And that will be so much better than anything we can ever uh, experience here on this planet. He who is the eternal word, the goal of the Torah, and the first and the last has declared, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last and the living one. And I was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. 
Revelation chapter 1, verses 17 and 18. This, my friends, is the rejoicing of the Torah. Thank you and Shabbat Shalom to all of you. May you have a blessed Simchat Torah. <clears throat> and uh, also the, uh, the new Shimine Atzeret. Let's look to this new year with anticipation of what is to come. Do not fear. Do not fear what's coming because it was already written in the book of Daniel, in the book of Zechariah, in the book of Revelation, and other places in the Bible. What we're seeing happening in these in this weekend and the weeks to come and the years to come is not a surprise. And we are to be prepared for it in in anticipation of eternity with Yeshua. Thank you, and thank you for continuing to give us our likes, for subscribing to our channel. As he, our channel has, uh, has grown by one subscriber. I'm happy for that. It helps us, to, like I said, be more visible on the internet to those who need to uh, hear the truth yet. All right, so that's our only goal. We're not out to seek for money or recognition or anything else like that. That is not my goal. Uh, check out our links below. Like I said, we have our free Messianic resources. Um, we have the uh, contact page link. We also have the link for those who would like to help support our ministry in any way. Uh, we appreciate that also. It all goes toward uh, printing books and sending books via mail to those who we can at least get our uh, names and addresses for, for those who have not yet at least heard about the message of salvation in Yeshua. And then there's the website that Gabriela, that Rebetzin Gabriela has, Mechesel uh, Shetikva, Refuge of Hope, in English and Italian, for those who like biblical-based counseling. Check it out. It's a really awesome website. And <clears throat> so I just, like I said, I wish you Shabbat Shalom. Continue to pray. Continue to stay in the word. Continue to push forward. Do not lose faith. Do not expect a pre-tribulation rapture because that is not going to happen, people. It is not going to happen. Okay. It will happen at the last shofar, just as the word says. So, do not fall away. Because I've heard many people who would say literally, uh, especially so-called pastors and other so-called believers who say they will leave their faith if they see that they are still here after the seven years starts. What a horrible, horrible thing to declare on one's eternity. Do not do that. Remember, Adonai's promises are always true for those who fight to the end. Bless you in the name of Yeshua. <clears throat>